Hello, my name is Lois Rowe. I am the Programme Director for Fine Art at Wimbledon College of Arts. Uh, several years ago, when the closure of Fine Art at Wimbledon was announced, uh, we went through a period of talking to the students about how we would best mark this moment, how we would celebrate, how we would, we would talk about this as an experience, um, how we would reflect on it and to articulate uh, what we were going through uh, as a college, as a, as a significant um, set of courses. and. It, at that time, we were able to receive a grant from the Wimbledon trustees, which gave us an opportunity to design um, an event or a, a program or a, a book. And we talked about all of these things as possible ways of marking this legacy of Wimbledon, of this college that has this incredible history um, and, and legacy within Wimbledon. And what the students chose to do was to create a film and what was key and very memorable about those conversations was that this, they felt, would really give them an opportunity to, to talk about the, their experiences authentically. And this word authentically came up a lot in those conversations. And in a way for me, looking at this film today, as you're about to do, it's, it's very interesting because I think more than a, a final piece of, of work or as a final film, um, the piece the value in the piece and the interesting thing for me are those conversations that led to its being made that those conversations those reflections those thoughts those um those sad moments even from staff that i feel are really really important and for me that is really the the, the kind of value for art generally um is is how art brings people together in this way and how art creates dialogue and and provokes discussion, important discussion, and often enables um, people to to celebrate, but also to overcome. And I think um, in some of the interviews you'll hear today in the video, um, you'll hear some of that being articulated. And, and what feels important for me is that these students were given the opportunity and staff to speak for themselves about this moment in time. And I hope you'll enjoy it as much as I do. Thank you. Hiya, I'm Tori and I studied on the fine art courses at Wimbledon College of Art and I studied print and time based media. Um, this film documents the voices of some of, student, of the students and staff of the final two years of the fine art courses at Wimbledon and it captures a real moment in time in the college's history. Um, so the creation of this film began before the pandemic hit. Uh, so students will also touch on how they navigated the change and how we really dealt with what's happened in the past year and apart from this something that i think is really evident in this film is the strong sense of community that's felt on site at wimbledon and the strong network of people that uh, everyone leaves the campus with and that's both students staff everybody that's on site and this is something that I feel very lucky to have experienced and I have left with a close circle of both friends and people who I can collaborate with and support as we move further into our careers. Um, and this is an impression that I think will live on despite the fine art courses coming to an end. Hello. Hello. <laughs> you can tell us your name, your course and the name of your college please. My name is Sarah Achinana Hans and I just graduated from the painting course in Wimbledon College of Arts. It just seemed like such an amazing, exceptional place to come. So, so yeah, here I am. Life changing. <laughs> really lucky to have tutors that looked at us individually and helped us to move in the direction that felt right for us rather than in a certain way, maybe that the university felt that, that would be the right way. I remember looking at the degree show and also just like looking at the course leaders and like looking up Zoe and thinking, oh, I want to do that. And honestly, it's the best decision I ever made. 
Uh, I chose Wimbledon because I was on the Canberra Open Nation and Sarah came in and she was a bit crazy and <laughs> she was like, there's a massive warehouse to do sculpture and it's great and there's so many crazy things to do and I was like, okay, good enough for me. <laughs> Wimbledon's community feels very special and feels like the right kind of weirdos put in one place <laughs> at one time um, and having things like elbow room um, is like a really good example of that. There's just something that is just so instantly friendly, like a warm feeling, like I just knew in that moment that this is where I'm gonna chase my fine art dreams. I really just liked how small of the community it was. I felt kind of not of a change from going to school to going to uni. Mm -hmm. I just really liked the atmosphere as soon as I came in. I think it was in the room whenever I had my interview. And I got handed a glass of wine <laughs> as soon as I came to the studio. You knew you were in the right place. Yes. <laughs> Wimbledon has a really strong community, and it's not just within within painting. It's within, within the whole the whole campus. Like, I have friends that are in costume, and like, it's so nice to ha say hi to people in PTBM, and also like theater design, set design, costume. Like, there's so many there's so many people from different places and from different courses and it's just, I don't know, everyone meshes very well together and since it's kind of small um, and in, it makes it more intimate and I feel like that's different than the other courses that I've noticed in UAL. Um, I think the fact that there's such a, a, a wide variety of courses in Wimbledon because you'd get, say for instance, the drama students that would be quite quite outspoken in the smoking area and then you just get the little fine artist just sat there being all quiet but yeah it's, it just makes it a bit more fun and quirky yeah that sort of freedom of expression is so important and play is put is celebrated so much here whereas I feel like with other universities there is a very much sort of structured way of learning um, and you kind of get bogged down with the ins and, out of, ins and outs of academic learning so I feel like with Wimbledon it's yeah it's more it's more freedom um, and of course the community here is lovely because it's a small university you kind of it forces you to get to know everyone and there's some amazing people here. It's a really good vibe it's very generous it's very uh, giving and you feel like it's a family it's great. <laughs> I really, really like my course. I think uh, I like that there are so many people who are doing different medias that it's always interesting to walk around or interesting also to see how people develop themselves from the first year. And yeah, I'm just really lucky to be studying with these people. I think the course like has always, no matter the size of the sort of like student intake and things, the course has always just been really exciting. Um, it's felt like there's a lot going on. Um, when I kind of first came, I wasn't sure. I was kind of like, oh, like, am I gonna fit in kind of thing? Cause sculpture people are weird. And then yeah. I was like, yeah, I am gonna fit in cause I'm a bit weird. <laughs> like when I first started, I thought that I wasn't a good painter or not a real painter because I kept beating myself up over the fact that my paintings didn't look like what I thought paintings were supposed to look like. And it's that kind of open-minded thinking and that kind of freedom to let you bloom and play with definitions and, and expectations that really set this course apart for me and made me extremely satisfied with it. I've learned a lot of different techniques in practicing as a painter, but I've also learned how to put on my own shows, how to create exhibitions, and all of this wouldn't have been possible without the kind of support I had here. Whenever you needed to talk to someone, you were able to talk to someone. I feel like I've created an overall practice where I understand a lot of different facets of being, being an artist. I would say, like, aside from Portland, probably it would be the parties again. <laughs> um, like, so it, not even just the party itself, like, just the build up to it, like, everyone's just setting up. I remember the first year, um, it was our first party, I think it was the Christmas party, um, <laughs> and me and Alice, like, we barely got to know the other years at this point, um, and me and Alice, suddenly we were in charge of snowflakes, <laughs> and I remember feeling so, like, 
oh my god we have to do a good job because we're <laughs> on art course and now we have to make these snowflakes um and like just the setup of it all is just so ridiculous and it goes back to that chaos yeah. um this christmas party had a catwalk like yeah. that is the type of christmas party <laughs> yeah. we have mm -hmm. and we once we done those snowflakes we got put in charge of every decoration yeah. for the <laughs> party my favorite memory is definitely are definitely the, the, the sculpture parties that happened. Um, there would always be events happening um, during the week, and I just love seeing like the flyers on the wall, being like, "Ooh, what's happening tonight?" And then just walking into an installation or an exhibition, and then there'd be a party or something. And I just love that everyone here was always doing something. It was it's a very progressive kind of environment, and someone's always making something. And I, I really miss that that kind of that buzz of, of, of entertainment, like nightlife and stuff like that. <laughs> I learned a lot with like all these hands-on uh, workshops given by our tutors. I think another good memory I had was the Venice trip we had to the Venice Biennale. So we joined, uh, Sculpture and PTBM had a trip there for three days, two days? Three? Three days. Three days, yeah. It was, it was really like, productive and fun and it was a really good introduction for all of us really yeah i mean it's mad that was the last biennale for a while now because of covid yeah <laughs> and the title was also interesting oh, was it mm. may you live in interesting times yep yeah may you yeah. live in interesting times because i was scared to not not be able to understand the units, uh, not be able to make friends, not be able to communicate with my tutors. But actually, the highlight was that all of these fears ended up being uh, illusions because I arrived there, I made friends the first day that stayed very dear friends that day, and friends and peers and artistic collaborators as well. Uh, and my tutors were 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 anchors. The most inspiring people to me is actually probably the tutors and the students. What can you tell me about your tutors? Oh, tutors are great. They're eccentric. Wimbledon has been a big part of my life. I've taught in painting for a long time and then I left for a while and I came back. I'm now teaching in print and time-based media and on many, many occasions I've worked with students on my own work um, as well as supporting them and I think it's it's been um, like a yeah it's, it's it's more than a job really it's it's been to do with how to relate to people and how creativity can be a really intrinsic part of our lives how supporting students in their careers can um, be a very useful thing in terms of the experience they've had as students and then if I've been able to support them when they graduated, so I've worked with a number of people who graduated. It's uh, kindness. I always use that word to describe women then because I think that sometimes we can lack it, especially when there is a lot of competition. We know that in the art world. So I think kindness is a big one. You bounce ideas off of each other and it's just a really friendly atmosphere in the studios and I really cherish that. Um, I think it's because it's so free and we're a small chorus so we always collaborate with each other. We're very different uh, from each other as well. So I think this kind of like freedom and variety and diversity just really lets you grow and just try out new things. Who inspires you? My peers. A really amazing highlight for me, the show at Copeland. You just feel the whole year group as a community come together and just present this amazing show. I just really enjoyed how that event kind of made us come together even stronger as a year group. How do you feel about fine art coming to an end? I feel quite proud that we're the last and we got chosen to be the last of this course. Um, obviously it's been difficult to get to this point, but it's, it's nice to be the final or something. Yeah. yeah. With painting coming to an end at 
Wimbledon College farts. It's it's so upsetting, but you just got to rejoice the period that we've had. Disappointed. We always hate to see fine art departments close down or merge or get cut off. So yeah, just pure disappointment. <laughs> yeah, I really feel bad about it because I think this kind of, um, let's say, model or course should really be pushed because I think that this is a, a way of art that is really like, like, in, in being important right now, like in the in the how you call it, like contemporary art, you know, it's like really... And I think that we should be thinking more about crossing fields and crossing mediums and think about the bigger in picture, so... Yeah. I think it's a loss. I think this was one of the few art schools that genuinely was interested in exploring all these things, like a genuine interest for art. A lot of our other colleges are quite commercial and like, oh, this is art, because it's reflective, but this was a... So it's a loss. It's a loss for other people. Sad, naturally. Um, I suppose. I mean, it, it is a shame. Like from everything I've heard, like after experiencing this, you'd feel like it's always something that's going to continue. But yeah, I can only express like you know a sense of pride that we're kind of the last of the bunch to pass through this and run this amazing gauntlet, but um, yeah, pride with a hint of sadness, I suppose, yeah. I would say I'm like disappointed, um, I just think like the community at Wimbledon is just something so special, um, and I'm sure like the UAL sites all have that kind of similar feeling in their own ways, but I think the Wimbledon one is just such a particular one, and I think it really relies on fine art and the things that fine art brings. Um, and although like it is great to kind of you know, be the last and go off like with a bang, but I just think it's it's just disappointing to know that they're just kind of letting that go, I suppose. Yeah. The sense of community, I mean it's such a, a buzzword, but um just yeah, in Wimbledon, you know, we had the studios, we had the courtyard and then we had all the workshops nearby. So like wood and metal and the foundry and the relationship with technicians because we were such a small course and because we had such lovely space mm -hmm. and such lovely people um it really is something that i mean i know my friends from other places <laughs> um haven't experienced and and it's kind of i mean it's what i guess it's what you always imagined art school would be like mm -hmm. but it isn't anymore mm -hmm. It's like, it just isn't. It's sad, it's very sad. Um, almost feel quite, feel like we're almost prophesized our year in a legacy of, of fine art. Um, yes, yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty, pretty sad, but new courses, new horizons. I feel terribly sad, but also terribly lucky that as a year group, and as a community at Wimbledon have something so special that I don't believe other colleges have and we have this togetherness and this community that will continue to support one another and continue growing. All of fine art became fine art rather than being separate specialisms and it's nice to meet everyone else and to learn what other people do and to kind of bounce ideas off each other as well. I mean, I think it's kind of made sculpture more of a unit as well, because like we've gone through this whole crazy post-traumatic experience of having everything taken from us. But out of that, we've actually become, you know, really good friends and we can joke about it and we can actually build something out of all the tough things that are happening in the world and actually come together. But I do yeah. think that because of, you know, all of these like people, especially in like recent years, we, we have been taught by the same people. Sarah has been running this course for a long time. I think we all, like, the majority of students who leave the course are very aware of the fact that the experience we've had is quite unique. Mm -hmm. And obviously some people are gonna want to go into teaching art and in, in some shape or form. And I can imagine that the, the way that we were taught 
will be like carried on. So yes, yeah. you're like losing history, um, but the the like values that we've all sort of learnt. Everyone says that at one point or another they they do return back to this college because it's just created such a statement in our lives and it's this changed everyone's so to, like for the better massively um with thanks to all the tutors with thanks to zoe mendelson um nelson tom all of these lovely tutors um they've just given us something to work with basically when we when we talked about the course ending with our tutors and you can just see how much of themselves like they've invested in the fine art community in Wimbledon. Um, it just seems like a real shame for that to be lost and even though they may carry on teaching elsewhere or you know they'll obviously carry on with their practice like there's something important about it being here um, that yeah it, it's just really sad. Yeah it's really sad and I'm kind of really happy that I got to be part of this story. I, I'd like to say it's like a story because We've talked to our tutors and they really told us like the history behind this and it's really strong. The fact that our course was actually born from like even elbow room, right? It's, it's something so cool and bizarre and I'm just really happy to be part of it. It's quite sad that I'm the last batch but it's definitely something that I will hold on like forever, you know? Um, yeah, so... <laughs> but during this whole time we haven't had that building anymore like we haven't had that space and yet i still feel fully connected to everybody that i was once sharing that space with and the building has held us for the past three years but the course it moves it moves with us and i found ways to collaborate with people afar I, I am someone who doesn't really work well with technology and I ended up doing two works that are computer based, so only around technology. And lockdown has shown me that I could do that. For me, it was maybe I'm one of the few people who thought it was quite hopeful. I learned how to play the guitar, which added new elements completely to my practice. And I learned how to tame my anxiety for futures and the fact that London is an anxious place. <laughs> so that's good for future endeavours. It's been kind of nice working from home because I'm, I'm quite an introvert anyway so I kind of enjoy like just making stuff on the computer and making plans so that now that I've come back in the studio I'm like wow I can do this, I can do that. I've got the space and the ability to like do all these things and I feel like it's made me feel a bit more confident about what I'm doing as well so I can come in and say oh yeah this is what I'm doing, this is what I want to do and this is how I'm going to do it and it makes me feel like I can actually become a real artist and mature a bit fulfilled yeah for sure like um i feel like the amount of resources we've had like, over, the, over the last two years i mean e even in spite of the pandemic and stuff it's been really generous um things like the woodwork shop the foundry it's all been it's all been like amazing for our practices uh, also the support of the tutors has been just like awesome <laughs> it's been so awesome for me, that I was no stranger to spend a lot of time by myself, but it has made me think about other people's experiences to life and perhaps in the future not be so insular and inward looking and start to talk about their experience and celebrate their experience and share those stories and, and by doing so enriching both our lives for a greater understanding. So even if I didn't have the space I wanted or the facilities I wanted, I still did with what I had. During this time, I found that myself and everybody in this house, like we've, we've been collaborating more so than than ever before, and it's it's really astounding. And I think it does come from that way that we naturally like like pull towards each other when when something is wrong or when something is shaken up to form this like support frame. And that pull and that collaboration, I felt not just from people in this household but from from everybody at Wimbledon massively altered my practice um I would say for the better though because it's more organized <laughs> we're definitely gonna come out of this stronger than before and I just hope that people who are feeling 
these feelings know that they're not alone. In the future, I would like either to be a art teacher or a freelance artist with my own studio space. I've just been accepted to the Royal College of Arts for masters in painting, so that's the next step for now. Uh, so I'm hoping in the future that I'll be able to make a career out of what I'm doing, but also that I can open this dialogue and hopefully help people, allow them to feel a little less lonely. Never stop painting. Never stop. Is there something you want us stage three painters and other artists to keep in mind moving forward with our journey? That your best asset is each other. And these past few years, we've worked together talking about art and how to make it, about studio, the contexts, ethics, materialities, politics and environments of practice. And this is all important, but in reality, and perhaps now more than ever, it's how you continue these conversations as a mutually supportive and critical group of practitioners that will sustain you. Keep the conversation going. So I hope, I, I not only wish them all the best for the future, but I also very optimistic that they're capable <laughs> of taking on the challenges that will be, that they'll face working on their own and independently on graduation. I mean, for graduating students, I think that one day in the future, I think that uh, Wimbledon probably seem like a, a quite a far off country to, uh, you know, uh, to uh, once you've gone and gone into the world and and uh, you know, kind of plowing in a sense your own furrow and stuff and. Um, but one of the things I think that's really important to install is that something of that commitment and a vision and to maintain that. that you know, that's, if I had a message, it was never to be distracted from that road. Uh, to always make that road wide and kind of directional, but to always never be distracted and never to be uh, dissuaded from it but to keep hold of that vision and to keep it intact, you know, and uh, always just to follow it. I think that's what, what I hope people will do, you know. You have to have that something of that desire to keep that alive. That's uh, what I hope uh, that graduates or alumni will take away with them. That would be my message, to always keep that thing alive. Everyone's got a different way of working, basically, and um, just you just got to embrace what you have as a person, as an artist, and just go with it. God, I just hope this building stands for the rest, rest of my life, really. I'll always remember Wimbledon um, in a good light, and I'm very grateful to have studied here and to have such amazing like uh, tutors and students around me. Yeah, I'm really blessed to be here. So yeah.